Now that we've updated the router lessons, it's time for us to update the data lessons. Now this one's gonna be a little bit more involved because we have more going on, plus we have uh, the database connection with uh, extensions. We're gonna to wanna to put that over into a state too, but that's getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, we're going to, well, update the version, same as before. So we'll update Cargo Tamil, bring you to 061, hit save, and let's go ahead. And now I, again, I previously did a cargo clean on this. We'll do a cargo. Um, we do know we were gonna want that use state with the right feature for it. So let's do a uh, add with the macros in. Then we're gonna do a cargo watch and get that going. Now that's gonna have a bunch of errors. So let's go ahead and pull in, excellent, okay. So we updated the version. Now, interestingly enough, we don't have our error in the library file, which is telling us that we have to update the, um, uh, the router return from that function to just be router instead of router body. And instead we have our error in custom JSON extractors. And this is because uh, Rust is checking for errors and as soon as it hits this error, it kind of stops checking other things. Um, so those errors still exist. We still need to handle them. We're just gonna have to start with this. Okay, so a few things for us to do. Um, this is asking for us to add in another, another generic here. And if we take a look at from request, it wants an S and a B. And if we scroll down a little bit to our examples, we're gonna have S and B here, S and B here. So let's add in an S and an S. It also suggests what we should bind S to trait-wise, which is this send and sync. Okay, so I'm gonna add that in there. Um, next up. If we take a look at from request, where it's it's yelling at us about those request uh, parts, let's go find this function signature. So we have this request. I'm gonna just take this down here and then it wants a state at the end. So I'm gonna copy you and just replace you here. I uh, cannot find request. So let's go ahead and import that. Um, no method named extract uh, found for request. Well, that's actually because there's a trait that we need to pull in. So we're gonna import the trait. And next up, this associated function takes two generic arguments, but only one was supplied. Well, so I need to tell it, okay, it's another generic argument. Okay, well, if JSON here after that, we're gonna give it the most generic that we can and underscore. And if I hit save, that seems to work. So for this ex extract, we're extracting the JSON and then yeah, we don't really care about the other thing. Just whatever whatever you wanna be, just you know, bring it out. Uh, okay, and that causes uh, this to be fine. So if we come back to our checklist, we have updated the custom JSON extractor. Now, now we get our error message from the library telling us, hey, we can't do this into make service. We have to come up here to router body and remove the body part. Okay, excellent. Next up. Um, we're getting these like weird trait bound messages inside of three of our routes. Now, these messages are not necessarily telling us like really good information, but what they're trying to tell us is that we're consuming the body uh, too early and it's therefore causing us to have problems. So what do I mean by that? If we go into create task, uh, an extractor like JSON or string now consumes the body of the, of the request and uh, prevents it from being able to be used by anybody else. So therefore the typed headers can't do their thing. So let's go ahead and move you to the bottom, hit save, head back into mod, and this no longer has an error. So that's, that's literally what it's trying to tell us. So 
I'm just going to go into each of these, move our JSON down to the bottom. And uh, let's see. Oh, wasn't this one? It was this one. Okay, so we're happy there again, but you may have noticed there's another red uh, with the custom JSON extractor. So let's head back over to here. It's, uh, okay, request parts. Let's remove you because you don't exist. Um, you're telling me that this parameter type B may not live long enough, uh, so that the type B will not meet its lifetime bounds, but it tells us, Consider adding an explicit lifetime bound of static. Okay, well, let's take this static here, copy that. And it wants this for B. Well, I can just add you to that. All right, and you're happy. Uh, no more error messages showing. We have some warnings, but we can take care of those later. Uh, so it's time now for a full test. Let's go ahead and make sure everything is working the way we expect it to before we start doing some of the more nice changes that, uh, that help us out. So Thunder Client, now our Hello World. Uh, this is session has expired. Okay, so let's go do a login really quickly. Uh, this, here's our token. Hello world, add, oh, sorry, yeah, hello world, there we go. Oh, we got that, validate data. Um, this is, oops, validate data, that seems to be working, custom JSON, okay. I'm just looking to make sure it's doing what I expect it to do. All right, get all tasks. Get one task, oh, 13. Um, that's because we don't have a four, uh, 13, let's go with 14. So get 14. Atomic update, we'll do 14. Partial update to 14. Uh, we can get one task again, and that is updated. We can delete 14 now. And if I try to get one task of 14, uh, it's not found. Okay, excellent. Uh, we can create a new account. So let's create meow4. Seems to be working. Okay. Uh, we already did login, uh, but I need to log in one more time really quickly to get a token so I can log out. Okay, so copy that, log out, and excellent. Okay, so um, let's, uh, we'll mark that as completed. Now, now we get to start thinking about uh, the parts of 0 0.6 that uh, help us out, that make things a little bit better. And the first one is gonna be um, putting our database connection in app state. So let's head back to mod. Uh, there we go. Um, I want to use a database connection instead of this layer here. So that way everybody just has access to it. So let's go ahead and create a new struct. So pub struct. I'm just call this app state. App state. Uh, we do know that this needs to uh, derive clone and that from ref. And we want a database. Database is going to be a database connection. Let's go ahead and create it here. So let uh, app state equals app state database. And I'm going to replace this layer here with a with state uh, app state. Okay, now this is going to cause problems because if I go and try to use something like create task, 
uh, we're going to get that runtime error of, hey, we can't get the database connection out of the extension because, well, now it's supposed to be in the state. So let's head back into mod here. Well, everything above this has the potential to be using it, although not everything is. So we're going to go into login and uh, let's update this. I actually see several of the users are doing this, so I can take you and I'll multi, multi cursor you. This is going to be state. So pull you in. Um, this is going to be database and that's uh, state database connection. And I want to, for you, copy you just for faster updating for the rest of things. Okay, create user, well that was in users, so I don't need to go back into that one again. Uh, delete task, I do need to go into you. Uh, so this extension database, we need to just update you and pull in state. Okay, uh, partial update. So we need to do the same thing here. So update you, pull in state. Um, atomic update. So pull in that and import state. And I'm just gonna continue working on doing all these. Up, oh, get all tasks. We already did that one. Create task. Okay, pull you in. Uh, okay, the custom extractor. We don't need to worry about that one because that is pulling in state through the. Well, first of all, it's not using the database, so we don't care about that. It's using the state, which I can underscore because. Yeah, it's, we don't we don't we don't need it. Um, validate data is not using the database, so we don't need you either. Uh, the guard will will deal with that later. Um, Hello world isn't using the database, and uh, logout is part of users, so we've already updated this. Okay, so now that's updated. If we just go back to login again. Everything should still be working. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So almost done. We're almost done. Last, uh, last big change is um, we want to update that guard middleware to now use the extract. Uh, well, we, we need to, uh, to have the guard use the state. And then we also want to update the guard to um, use extractors directly because that's a that's a cool new feature that they have, which is really nice. Let's head back into mod and we'll head back into guard here. So first off, there is a new function. So middleware we can do from function with state and be aware that this takes in state first and then our function second. So we just need to add in our update. Um, we need to just clone it directly and pass it in. Okay, so we're good to go. Let's head back into guard. Um, now guard is going to take in, let's see if we look at this, function state it has an example. So my middleware here takes in state and then our request and next. So it's pretty much exactly as we expect it to. So let's head back into guard. This is gonna take in um, state, state. There we go, import that. We want our database. Uh, that's gonna be type state. Uh, and we're gonna use the database connection out of that. Uh, okay, well, it's not uh, using this because we're getting the database out of the extension here. So we don't need to do that anymore. Go ahead and 
delete that. Uh, but we do need to use this as a reference now. Okay, that's one big change. The other big change is we don't need to do this entire thing to get, um, well, extractors out of the request. We can now just use extractors inside of the function signature uh, without, uh, as long as it's before request and next. So uh, easy way to think about this is put state first and then put uh, your extractors second and third and fourth and whatever, and then last is the request and next. So in this case, we want our typed header, uh, which is gonna be the token. You're a typed header with an authorization bearer inside. Now this token does need to run this token method on it with a two owned. So I'm gonna take you and place that with just the token so we'll shadow it. And that gives us the token string. Uh, the user, well, this is now just using the database to get the user from the database. Okay, great. Uh, we check to see if it's valid. Um, uh, we check to see if we found the user. Uh, okay, this is great. Now we're still doing a request extension here to insert the user. Um, now this is still a best practice. We don't want to try to do funny things to mutate the state because I want this to crash and fail if the user doesn't exist. Um, so therefore, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep this part, and then we run next. Okay. Everything should still be good. Let's make sure, let's go find the route that used the middleware, uh, which was this uh, hello world or log out. So let's log in again, get a new token, because I think I'm having a um, uh, timeout after like 30 seconds. So copy you, go back to hello world, use you in here, and it's still working, okay. So, deep breath, we have successfully upgraded our Axum uh, data server to Axum 0.6, and we're using some of the new features uh, that have come with Axum 0.6 that make our lives a lot nicer. So, um, thank you uh, again for watching. Uh, hopefully, this has been helpful if you, um, in, in updating your own projects. There's a lot more that Axum 0.6 did, but a lot of that is to parts of Axum that were out of scope for this introduction course. Uh, you should be able to get help if you need it from the Axum uh, Discord. So with that, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.